the Astros, they pulled it off. Um, they were getting booed on the road since the 2017 debacle. And they used that as a underdog story, even though they went through this postseason, I think, with like, what, an 11-2 and two record or something absurd. They only lost twice. They were quite inevitable, it seems. Yeah, and that's just how it felt. And yeah. the Phillies were a fun story. And despite... The many rivalries that my sports team have teams have with Philadelphia, top five, top three sports town in this country. Oh in, yeah, in terms of just yeah. Bummer for them though uh, that they're one of the few. I mean, probably the best sports town in this country. If we're really thinking about it that hard. Well, but... I, I mean, especially given I mean the Flyers have struggled a little bit recently, but. You take the Eagles, the Sixers, and the Phillies all having moderate or, you know, to significant success in the past five years. And it's kind of amazing that the combination of the fan base and the success of the of the big teams there have all kind of coincided in the last, like, decade. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would be feeling – I'd still be feeling – I would be hanging my hat uh, and, ha and holding my head high if I'm a Philly – if I'm a Phillies fan, honestly, because I don't think, you know – I don't even think from the wild card round they necessarily thought that they'd be in the World Series. So I think it was a really, really successful season for them, no matter what. And I think this is only um, emblematic of what's to come for them, honestly. Yeah, and and look, I mean the the they the Astros felt inevitable not just because of how good they've been over the past few decades, but they almost seemed due in and of themselves because they had five straight ALCS. Uh, appearances and they had not yet since their cheating scandal been able to or the sign stealing whatever you want to say been able to kind of bring it home but like the town is undeniable on both the offensive side of the ball <laughs> and just the way that they're like uh, their their pitching lineup is just incredible so I mean they, it was deserved on a talent standpoint and it's pretty it's pretty spectacular because it's also a real testament you know all of the obvious, you know, you know, the feelings towards the chicanery that the entire organization committed. Um, it's at this point in time in their franchise, like AJ Hinch, the manager that presided over the cheating scandal is gone. Jeff Lunau, the general manager who presided over the cheating scandal is gone. And, you know, lesser teams that... And, and not even all of the players, too. Carlos Correa is on the Twins. George Springer is on the Blue Jays. Like They did kind of experience a significant level of overhaul. And also, honestly, like when you're a team that not only has like gone through something really turbulent and controversial like that, and also relatively like amoral and, and, and less like not super defensible, it's kind of hard to rebound from that just from like a cultural level. Especially, well, you have to come up with like a justification for why you have been wronged. I mean, right. I feel like the Browns Absolutely. players were doing that oh, yeah. in the in, totally in the in training camp. Like the world, it's us against the world you, because everyone's right. focusing on us because of Deshaun Watson. You have to like f exactly. You have to figure out a way essentially to like make it fuel, especially when like everyone else in the in the league, you know, to the to an extent, rightfully so, hates your guts. The and, Patriots did that too. Yeah, absolutely. The Patriots 100%. did that with with Deflate Gate with, with everything. Every, with everything with the, with you know Brady. They somehow Absolutely. made themselves into underdogs and the Warriors never being underdogs. And the Warriors do a similar thing, which I think is like, which is, I think, honestly, what a dynasty or a dynastic team, controversy or not, kind of has to employ to, like, mm -hmm. justify, like, we need to keep winning, sort of. Right. But, like, I got to hand it to them in terms of, you know, Dusty Baker did a great job managing this team. Um, James Click, the guy who replaced Lunau at general manager, kept kept a lot of their great pieces but also upgraded at others and, and you know found gold in a lot of different places i mean jordan alvarez is one of the best young hitters in the entire league jeremy pena the world series mvp he's 25 years old but he made his mlb debut this year i mean they not only got real production out of the people they expected to but they also found really really important um assets to their to their victory um this year and also like you said i mean five straight alcs pennants and two world series in the last five years i mean this is a really impressive run for a team where you know success at every level is really not guaranteed because i mean look at the kansas city royals they beat the Mets in the World Series in 2015, and they're one of the absolute worst teams in the league now. It's never, it's never ever necessarily divined that once mm -hmm. you get there, you'll get there again. No, not at all. I mean, often you see these things fall apart. There's a hangover element. 
just to bring him back to football, we're seeing it with the Rams right now. A hundred percent. Oh, and, and absolutely, without question. I mean, they <laughs> just in the same calendar year where they won the Super Bowl, they are probably not making the playoffs this yeah, year and, and lost to a very depleted Bucks team that has not been looking good recently. And it happened the first time the Bucks won the Super Bowl as well with absolutely. with Gruden, and then in the 03, next year, yeah. right, right. So, um, no, totally. I remember that because, uh, yeah, that's I was. That that's just some uh, of the old history of like Gruden that I've been looking into recently, oddly, but um, but, but but yeah. But as I've as I've been saying the last few weeks, I am genuinely happy for Dusty Baker because he literally by I think about a thousand games or something like that had the most games managed before winning a World Series. He's seventy three years old. Mm-hmm. He. The last time he did win a World Series as a player over 40 years ago. And by all accounts, I mean, he's had some really close calls. The Nationals were good when he was manager. He was the manager of the faded, you know, Steve Bartman Cubs right. in the in the mid-2000s that lost that series. Like, he's been close many times. And by all accounts, he seems to be a very, like, genuinely kind and generous person that is kind of loved by all from where he goes. And... Uh, fun fact: He uh, canonically ha- uh, apparently invented the high five. Oh wow! Um, apparently, as a celebration that you know, when he was a player, he was just like, "Yeah, I kind of just like my hit my my uh, teammate's hand was out, so I just like grabbed his hand and like, and that like bas- basically the high five was like created from there." That's not real. No, they, they, every, if you if you look it up, everyone everyone credits Dusty Baker with being a part of really? of of, 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 na- of like popularizing the high five in sports that is really a like a way to cement yourself everyone in the world has or everyone in the united states has high five someone at absolutely least, at least one time so beyond his his you know legendary status as an mlb player and manager he also is you know a cultural icon so congrats to dusty <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> That's more. That's more of an accomplishment than the World Series. I no, no question. Like, <laughs> long after we're all gone, people will be high fiving. People will still be high fiving. Our, our our robot uh, descendants will be high fiving each other. Right. In right. In uh, they'll be high fiving each other using our severed hands. Right. In like, as an, their own. in like an ashen heap of mm-hmm. you know bio waste. <laughs> 